This is a short instructional video designed to introduce basic data management using SPSS 16. Most of what is covered in this video also applies to SPSS versions 14 through 19. As a KSU student, you will have access to SPSS from most computer labs except in the library. By default, you have access to SPSS 14, but newer versions are available as well. Log in to netid.kennesaw.edu and choose Set Application Preferences. In the list of programs you can request, choose SPSS 15, and if you are currently opted out, then click Opt In and Submit. Go back to NetID Application Preferences and opt in to SPSS 16 as well. I would not recommend using more recent versions because they do not run as fast, they crash more often, and don't offer any more capabilities than you will need for the research sequence, but it's your choice. Before you can see the other versions of SPSS in your programs list in the start menu, you must log out of your computer, then log back into the computer. This will update your preferences. Make sure to open up SPSS through the folder that says SPSS for Windows which is in the folder called KSU Distributed Applications, not the folder that just says SPSS. When you first open SPSS, you will see a dialog box with several options. Notice that there is a tutorial available in the program itself, which could also be beneficial for you to watch. You may open existing data sources or output files, but for now, choose to type in data. The SPSS window has two views at the bottom left. Data view is where the raw data can be entered, and variable view is where you can list the variables and define their properties. In data view, each row is called an observation or a case. Because psychology is primarily the study of human behavior, Usually, each row will represent each person in the sample, and each column is a variable, which is a characteristic of that person. Open the Excel file called Sample Data, available from the KSU PsychLab webpage. One way to transfer your data into SPSS is to copy and paste the cells, but you will notice that the top line of the Excel spreadsheet contains variable names, not raw data. This cannot be pasted into the SPSS spreadsheet. Furthermore, if you attempt to paste textual data, such as M and F for gender, SPSS will not accept this data unless you assign the variable properties ahead of time. An easier method is to open the Excel file directly into SPSS. Click on File, Open, and for file type, select Excel Spreadsheet. Then, find the file and open it as if it were already an SPSS file. The variable names will automatically be taken from the first row, and numeric and textual data should be imported appropriately. An output window will appear with a record of this. Click on Variable View to control the properties of each variable. In Data View, each column was a variable, but here, each row is a variable, and each column is a characteristic about the variable. Check that the numeric data are labeled as such, and that the type for textual data is called string. Type is different from what kind of measurement is used. For example, you may use numbers to code for sex, where 0 is male and 1 is female, but although that would be a numeric type, it is still a nominal measurement. Take care to distinguish between ordinal, categorical, and scale measurements, which are continuous numeric data, such as interval and ratio. Variable names cannot include spaces or special characters, and they should be short. So, if a name does not make it obvious what kind of information is recorded, then you can enter a more detailed or specific label. For example, Vote 2008 can be labeled, Did you vote in the 2008 election? Notice in data view that the first age listed seems to be a typo. If you have no access to the original data source to check the true age, mistakes should be considered missing. In variable view, click on missing for age and select the range option so that any age over 110 is considered missing. 
Notice you can also exclude data with specific values. Click OK. Next, notice that in Data View, the values for Party are capital letters. In Variable View, click on Values for the variable Party to assign labels for each of these letter codes. In the dialog box, enter D for Value and Democrat for the label. Then click Add. Repeat this for the other two codes. R is Republican, I is Independent. Click Add and OK. So that the output will be easier to read, you can repeat these steps for the variables for sex, where M is male and F is female, and for Vote 2008, where Y is yes and N is no. This data has several scale variables, and all are recorded only in whole integers. So in the decimal column, choose to display zero decimal places. Conservatism is measured on a Likert scale from 1, meaning very liberal, to 9, meaning very conservative. So a higher number means higher conservatism. Perhaps it would be easier to recode the data so that instead of 5 being the midpoint, 0 is the midpoint. And negative numbers would indicate levels of liberalism, and positive numbers would indicate conservatism, where 0 would be perfectly moderate. This would be the same 9-point scale, but moved a little bit further left on the number line. To transform data like this, click on Transform in the top menu and select Recode into Different Variable. It is smart not to recode into the same variable in case a mistake is made and you need the original data. In the dialog box, select the variable you want to recode and then type in the name for the new variable. We'll call it Con2, but you can use the same label, Political Orientation, because it's still measuring the same thing. Click on Change, then click on Old and New Values. On the left side, select System or User Missing, and on the right side, select System Missing, then click Add. This will ensure that all missing values remain missing values in the new variable. Then assign Old Value 1 to New Value negative 4. Click Add, then Old Value 2 to New negative 3, and so on until you replace old value 9 with new value 4. Once all value transformations are added to the box, click OK and click OK again. The output window will record this transformation. Similarly, you can transform these numbers into categories. For instance, if you want to take the three lowest numbers and label them liberal, the three highest numbers labeled conservative, and the three in the middle can be labeled moderate, this would create an ordinal categorical variable from a numeric one. Likewise, you could combine categories of a variable, such as combining Libertarian, Green, and Reform Party members into one category, Third Parties. Save your SPSS data file to save these changes. Note that the data window and the output window are saved in separate files. Data file extensions are .sav and this file can be opened in any version of SPSS. However, the output files are .spo for SPSS 14 and 15 and .spv for SPSS 16 and higher. It is important to remember which version of SPSS you used to generate the output because it can only be opened in the same version. No relevant output was gener generated in this session because no analyses were, were performed, so you don't need to save the output at this time. You may also need to save the data as an Excel file sometimes, either so that the data can be analyzed or graphed in another program, or because more people have access to Excel than to SPSS. 
Click on File, then Save As. For file type, choose an Excel spreadsheet. The next videos will cover the various statistical analyses covered in the KSU Psychological Research Sequence. They are available on the PsychLab webpage and the YouTube channel in her image. Thanks for watching.